Meet Milati. I'm 19 years old. Jamie. My name is Jamie Margolin. And 16, Nicole, Marinelle, okay. Elizabeth, <laughs> Lily, Radima, and Helena. También he crecido en Ecuador. I come from the Philippines. Soy de Argentina, de Amanegaña, and I'm 24 years old. They grew up all over the world. Between 11 and 24 years old, these young women have already experienced droughts, floods and fires. The number of these disasters has been multiplying over the last 15 years. Despite their differences in culture, geography and age, today they are united in a common fight to make the world more aware of the climate emergency with a powerful weapon, social media. Activists. This is happening now. This is not a battle that we will face in the future. This is the Greater Generation, named after Greta Thunberg, the most famous activist among them. You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. These young women already have the charisma and confidence of great political figures. Who are these activists who are prepared to skip school in order to demonstrate? We have started destroying our planet just because of playing greed. So we share one planet. I mean, we have seven billion dreams in one planet, and all of us should be on the forefront. Well, this is a Hail Mary last attempt to save life as we know it. What hopes do they have? How do they intend to convince the rest of the world to change? How much longer do we have to wait? By video conference, they agree to share their stories and what motivates them. This is the story of a generation determined to save our planet. <laughs> Fires. Floods. Storms. And I'm glad that we're still here, so just stay strong and we'll be okay. Since the 2000s, there have been countless natural disasters that have led to a large amount of human suffering. November 2013. The high-end super typhoon wreaks havoc in the Philippines. A huge cyclone whose wind gusts exceed 300 kilometers per hour. And huge waves devastate the coasts. Haiyan hits nearly 10 million people. Of those, 600,000 are left homeless. For Marinelle, 16 years old at the time, it's the beginning of a long struggle. I don't want to see my community and my family being in this um, situation again. Seeing the devastation, seeing our house has been washed out, seeing all of these people trying hard to survive and just getting literally everything in the ocean, it awakened me like I need to do something. So I don't want just to sit there and play and do nothing and just wait for another disaster to come and just be a victim of all my life. This is not a battle that we will face in the future. This is a battle that we need to face now in the present. Scientists are adamant that climate change is caused by human activity. While it affects populations all around the globe, the countries at the south are the first victims. starting with African countries whose greenhouse gas emissions are negligible. This is precisely what worries Elizabeth. A lot of people have been saying that Africa will be the hardest hit by climate change, but the reality is that we are already facing the impacts. Just a few months ago, we had the aspect of the floods and the droughts and mudslides. So we've, we've actually had the worst outbreak of locusts in 25 years. 
Kenya, where Elizabeth lives, is suffering the violent consequences of these changes. Because of the increase in the amount of rainfall, billions of locusts have invaded the country. We fear it a lot because it has never happened ever since we came to this place. It is the first of a kind and it is so terrifying. These swarms of insects, 60 kilometers long and 40 kilometers wide, destroy everything in their path. In a single day, these locusts can devour the agricultural production that would be consumed by 80 million people. I actually come from one of the regions in Kenya that is mostly dependent on agriculture. So you can imagine what kind of damage this means for the African continent. These phenomena are not unique to Kenya. In West Africa, in Niger, the rainfall is getting more and more irregular, often followed by severe droughts. This directly threatens the survival of the herds, which are raised by the nomads of the Fulani people. Once again, the life of humans as we know it could be seriously threatened. On the other side of the world, in the Amazon, Helena is also witnessing a major change in the climate. And for her, the drought that now threatens Latin America is no coincidence. Una consecuencia también del cambio climático. Ahora que viene una época de sec de, de sequía en, en Ecuador que va que va a hacer mucho calor, no en los ríos van a secarse totalmente. Y ya vimos el anterior año. Yo nunca he visto eso en mi vida. Mis mayores lo notan bastante. Dicen que es Totalmente different de, de, de cómo crecieron ellos. These phenomena are becoming more frequent, more intense, and there are numerous consequences. While some countries are suffering the full force of the heat wave, others are victims of terrible floods and landslides. In June 2013, in Uttarakhand, a small state in northern India at the foot of the Himalayas, a violent monsoon caused dams to break, and with them came torrents of mud. At the age of 12, Redima has a sad memory of this disaster. At that time, because of that flood, there was a huge area lost. It washed away many houses and many animals and people were killed during that flood. This huge flood killed a thousand people and displaced another 70,000. Many kids were crying for their parents like, I lost my mom, I lost my dad and I lost my home. What should I do now? I don't know what to do. I want my mom and I want my dad. So at that time I felt very bad. More than 5,000 deaths have been recorded in India in 2013 alone, the worst natural disaster of the decade. So our questions came in my mind, and again a thing popped up that, who was responsible for that? And like, so my parents told me that we are responsible. As with heat waves, typhoons or floods, scientists say there is also a link between rising temperatures and the intensity of fires. In 2019, huge fires destroyed more than 8 million hectares in Australia. My main thing is I just want to be alive and for all of us to be safe. I really don't have any feelings about my house at the moment at all. 
These mega fires have killed 24 people, and it's estimated that more than a billion animals have died. A glimpse into the disasters to come if we continue to do nothing to protect the climate. Direct victims or spectators of climate change, the young women of the greater generation decided to bring an end to this chaos. How can new generations accept growing up in a world that adults are putting in danger? How can we live with the permanent threat of the next catastrophe? Without answers, these questions are warning bells to the world and its leaders. For a long time, we saw the crisis of climate as an polar bear in the danger of extinction by the glaciers. Before, when we talked about the crisis of climate and other things, it was a problem of the future. Ver esas imágenes te hacen dar cuenta que no es un problema del futuro, es un problema que ya está pasando y que ya está teniendo consecuencias. From France to Australia, from Poland to the United States, the greater generation is mobilizing in the face of these reoccurring disasters. It's September 2018 and soon strikes for the climate are beginning. What are the youths fighting for? More effective world environmental policies. Our Prime Minister thinks we should be in school right now, and maybe we should be. But how can we just sit by and not do anything to protect the future of this planet? On Thursday or Friday, tens of thousands of students miss school to take part in demonstrations in support of action against the war. One year later, mobilization is at a record high. More than four million young people are marching in cities around the world. One generation really shouldn't have to be out here missing school. Yeah. We should be in school. <laughs> It's so empowering to see so many young people stand up and, you know, finally we're feeling the position that we play or the, the role that we play as young people in a larger picture. Now we are starting to see a narrative and a possibility where young people understand what it means to stand up for what they believe in, for what is right, and just go for it. Et de voir tout d'un coup que on a la, la masse avec nous, que c'est pas juste euh, un sujet de niche et des gens, euh, euh, des écolos bobos dans leur coin qui agissent. Là, ça devenait vraiment euh, public, quoi. Après ça, tous les mois, il y a eu d'autres marches pour le climat. Euh, les médias ont commencé vraiment à s'approprier le sujet. Et euh, les célébrités, euh, des personnalités euh, se sont emparées aussi du sujet. Et, euh, et depuis, euh, le, le, clairement, c'est presque inévitable maintenant, l'écologie. En France, même avant le début des démonstrations, un événement va choquer les jeunes climatiques. À la fin de l'août 2018, Nicolas Hulot, ministre de l'écologie et de la solidarité de la transition, appointé par Emmanuel Macron, résigne. Ma démission signifie une forme de résignation. Le fait que le ministre de l'écologie démissionne en disant qu'il est incapable de faire bouger les choses de l'intérieur, c'est euh, quelque chose de, 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 de super marquant en fait. C'est dire que le politique actuellement euh, n'est pas à la hauteur de l'enjeu climatique. For the majority of these young women, the lack of decision making by political leaders in the face of global warming is serious. This irresponsible behavior has prompted many to take action, especially in the United States. I can't think of a moment what took me from just being worried about it to taking action, and that is the 2016 election in the United States. Obama, he wasn't a climate champion by any means, but he wasn't like overtly hostile to the cause. So it was like, oh, maybe they'll step up, maybe we'll do something. And then with the election of Trump, it was just kind of a blow. It was a reminder that like, I can't wait for the American government to do something. And so I was like, wait a minute, I can't just sit around. These leaders are not going to do something. And so I have to do something. Donald Trump in the United States. La 
Vladimir Putin in Russia and Tony Abbott in Australia. But also Nicolas Sarkozy in France. The decade of 2010 was marked by the number of political leaders who make no effort to hide their climate skepticism, like the leader of the Brexit party, Nigel Farage, who doesn't well, hold Rose, back on his own you, skepticisms entire, and even lies in front of the of European Europe, Parliament. Perhaps. It is time to stop this stupidity and to help you. There's the NASA photograph last August of the ice cap, the northern ice caps. And there is the NASA photograph this year of the ice caps. It is increased by 60% in one year. We may have made one of the biggest, stupidest, collective mistakes in history by getting so worried about global warming. These statements explain and reinforce the mistrust of young climate activists towards politicians. A young Swedish woman will embody this anger and create a true movement for her generation. Following a particularly hot summer in Sweden in 2018, a young girl from Stockholm decides to start a climate war. Standing alone in front of the Swedish parliament, this 15-year-old girl launched the first ever school strike. What made me decide to strike for the environment was that no one is doing anything, nothing is happening. And so then I guess I have to do something and it is my moral duty to do what I can and this is something I can do to try to make a difference. Very quickly Greta Thunberg became an icon for young people fighting climate change around the world. Her swift rise to fame has enabled her to meet global leaders and encourage them to face their responsibilities. Thank you so much for stopping by to say hello. Thank you for having me. Of course. Well, you're changing the world, so... Even if Greta is not the first young girl to mobilize for the climate, she embodies the generation that decided to put an end to the climate inaction of the powerful. Right now, we are living in the beginning of a climate and ecological breakdown. I don't want you to listen to me. I want you to listen to the scientists. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words, and yet I'm one of the lucky ones. Once I saw that video, that was just... <sighs> and I thought, I need to support this. And, after, and then after that, that was my first call strike. And if you don't believe the effects of climate change, look outside and look at the news. The effects of climate change are happening now and they're happening fast. Thousands of young people are mobilizing. And in the sessions, young girls have the front row seats. The government needs to wake up. Enough is enough. We take those things in our hands when the adults doesn't. Creo que no es casualidad que las activistas y las referentes en general sean mujeres, porque es muy curioso ver la la lógica que hay entre la opresión al cuerpo de la mujer, la opresión que hay a la naturaleza, por ejemplo. Young girls are particularly sensitive to the fact that women are the first victims of climate change. The UN estimates that women and children are 14 times more likely to die from natural disasters. Women are the people that, of course, right now are on the forefront when it comes to the matters of environmental law. Because when there's a water crisis, they're the ones that have to walk for long distances looking for water just to feed their families. For many, climate is one of the major issues that women can exercise their rights for in the 21st century. An idea that came about after the protests of the 1970s when struggles for the environment and women's rights emerged. You're already at a socioeconomic disadvantage, which women are because of sexism and patriarchy, then you're going to be 
less able to recover from a storm, to recover from a climate disaster, to be able to advocate for yourself. Um, 80% of people, according to the United Nations, who are displaced by climate change are women. In my community, las mujeres se dedican a cultivar la tierra, están conectadas con la tierra. Entonces eso hace que, que, que nos, nos preocupamos y que también sentimos la responsabilidad de, de proteger eh, el planeta. And if you think about it, how we treat our earth is how we're treating women, exploiting, assaulting, taking advantage. The same way that women are being treated is the way the earth is being treated. The climate crisis is a result of the patriarchal systems of oppression that have been holding women down as well as the planet down. A lot of people don't like that, which... Since the Industrial Revolution in the mid-19th century, the acceleration of productivity has totally disrupted ecosystems. For activists, our economic model is at the root of today's disasters. That's why each activist has tried to stop this frantic race in their own way. But where do we start this huge fight? L'urgence est telle qu'on ne peut pas juste rester dans les marches, dans les manifestations, dans les pétitions, dans le, le plaidoyer, la sensibilisation. Aujourd'hui, il faut vraiment euh, euh, frapper fort et attirer l'attention. Si vous aimez la nature, vous n'êtes pas going to être partie de cette nature destructive. In Kenya, Elizabeth decided to gather a group of people to grow as many trees as possible. One of the most simple and effective ways to fight against the greenhouse gases that cause global warming. And we've been able to plant over 5,000 tree seedlings at Kirita Forest. And uh, we're basically passing a message to the world that uh, we should be able to give back to the community by greening our country, Kenya. Each tree planted will absorb between 10 and 50 kilograms of CO2 per year. In just a few years, Elizabeth and her association have planted more than 30,000 trees. I started to do what we call inculcating in people a tree growing culture. And this is where I ensure that people get to not just plant the trees, but need to ensure that these trees get to grow up to maturity. So actually what I'm doing is beyond tree growing as well, because I am nurturing young people to love nature and connect to nature at a young age so that they can gain environmental consciousness when they are still young. Climate justice now! The world must act now! In Indonesia, Melati has also decided to tackle a problem that particularly threatens Bali, the island she lives on. Tons of plastic waste litters the beaches and turns the sea into a garbage bin. Her association, called Bye Bye Plastic Bags, is trying to save Indonesia's biodiversity, considered by the United Nations as one of the richest in the world. We started noticing that plastic was ending up everywhere. And we started getting frustrated, annoyed, saying, why isn't anybody doing anything about it? And then we started buying a plastic bag to protect our island home of Bali. Hello, everyone. We're from Team Bye Bye Plastic Bags. The plastic goes in the red one. Thanks, girls. As time goes on, Indonesian islands are looking less and less like paradise. The plastic problem is much bigger than just the case of Bali. Mega landfills like this one can be found all over the country. Also in China, the Philippines, Thailand or Vietnam, these five Asian countries alone dump more than four million tons of waste into the oceans every year, according to the NGO Ocean Conservancy. If nothing is done, 250 million tons of plastic waste will accumulate in the world's waters by 2025. So how can we promote a culture of zero plastic everywhere in the world? How can we change mentalities before it's too late? In the Netherlands, at only 10 years old, young Lily decided to tackle
tackle the problem too. Pick up your rubbish, because remember, I'm black, literally black, licensed to pick up plastic. And if you want to be an angel like me, pick up your rubbish, kids. He started picking up uh, pieces of plastic, and then we posted those on social media so that people know about this. And then more and more people started to realise that this is a real problem, or more and more people started to wake up. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. To help them in their fight, all climate activists communicate extensively on social networks, a powerful tool to overcome borders and cultural differences, but also to mobilise beyond their local initiatives. The greater generation is the generation of social networks, a key weapon to organise and structure their climate crusade. Thank you very much for listening and have a classic free day. Bye-bye. So... That's a little bit from us that we'd love to share with you guys, but we're also really, really excited to hear back from you. But it is impossible to fight without tackling the source of the climate crisis, fossil fuels. Global warming and the ecological disasters that accompany it are largely due to our dependence on gas, oil and coal. For activists like Nicole, there is an urgent need to reorganize energy transition. In Argentina, el 56% de estos gases contaminantes tiene que ver con la energía, tiene que ver con el fracking, y es que toda la energía que usamos para el transporte y para nuestro día a día viene de la energía fósil. El 70% más o menos de las emisiones de gases de efecto invernadero son producidas por las mismas 100 empresas a nivel global. Companies often act with disregard for the environment and the indigenous people living on the land that they wish to use. This is the tragedy that struck a community living in Ecuador, the Sarayaco, where Helena lives. In 2002, with the complicity of the Ecuadorian state, an oil company came to drill in the heart of the rainforest, and it almost ended very badly. El año que yo nací tuvo problemas con una compañía petrolera cuando sin consultar a mi comunidad entraron a, a explotar petróleo. ¿Qué hace, señor coronel? No tienen ningún derecho de hacer esto. Vamos a seguir luchando. Vamos a seguir quitando más armas. Aquí hay un cerco militar. Aquí ha quedado basura. Aquí ha quedado destrucción del medio ambiente. Cuando vieron que hubo resistencia, trajeron a los militares eh, y empezó un periodo muy, muy dura para mi comunidad. No sabíamos qué iba a pasar mañana. Logramos sacar la compañía petrolera en una corte internacional después de 10 años de haber empezado esa lucha. Forests and ecosystems are a part of the solution. So if we deforest them all, then we're killing ourselves. A passage of, of just all these legislation that needs to happen, lowering emissions, shutting down fossil fuel plants, replacing them with renewable energy, um, stopping the deforestation of the Amazon, stopping the Australian bushfires, um, returning land to indigenous people, and because this is humanity shooting itself in the head. Fossil fuels, the food industry, multinationals in textiles and plastics, the greater generation is demanding a total change in the economic model. For these activists, it's essential for the survival of our planet. They're ready to sue polluting companies and industries. For me, if calling for climate justice, um, the first thing that we should do is really to have the legal basis, the legal paper, saying that these corporations are really can be sued. The petition that we have submitted to the Commission on Human Rights is the first in the world public inquiry about the about the contribution of these corporations to human rights violations linked to climate impacts. Climate change is being fueled by just 90 corporations, and we need to make them accountable. That's why the Conference of the Parties was created. Thank you very the much, Greta. Historically, these international negotiations are intended to stabilize the level of greenhouse gas emissions in order to prevent climate change. According to experts, at the current rate, warming could reach four degrees by 2100, a catastrophe. 
Vous savez, on est sur un, un fil du rasoir où l'humanité peut basculer vers une forme de résignation ou au contraire une forme d'ambition. An ambition that is reflected in the Paris COP21, which plans to keep global warming below 2 degrees by 2100. L'accord de Paris pour le climat est accepté. An opportunity for the younger generation to speak up for the first time. I don't want to see my children and grandchildren suffer just because we did not do something in time. If the global warming reaches more than two degrees, this might be the point of no return. Thank you. Would have thought that a girl from a remote community in the coast of the Pacific would be given a chance to speak in front of the world leaders, you know? That is like... Um, that is like, uh, for me, it is like an empowerment because it means that every single voice is important and should be heard. Since then, they've been invited to speak at these conferences. I need you to understand the fear and despair that young people live with on a daily basis. It's shameful to see the government do that. Helena, Jamie and the others soon saw their hopes extinguished by the limits of this international cooperation. It's all just a show. It's an act. It's a production. Nothing actually comes out of these, and it's it gets really tiring because it's run by the same people who caused this problem yeah, in the first place. Done. So how do you expect good solutions to come out of the people who caused this problem in the first place? It doesn't make logical sense, but we keep doing it. For these young women, the COP25 that took place in Madrid in 2019 is a symbol of the failure of these negotiations. COP25, I mean, it's 25 years that this conference has been existing and we hear excuses, excuses, excuses. That's why we're not seeing any change happen because people can just make goals or pledges or sign this memorandum of understanding or sign this regulation, but they're not being held accountable. We are fighting for your children. We are fighting. Typhoon Tisoy um, hit our our province during the COP25, and they're not even talking about it. They're not even talking about it. They're not making any concrete plan, any action to really solve this crisis. It's just so unfair. Like, do you really realize how much lives has been at stake because of your inaction? You don't even get the attention from the world, the attention of the number of people that are losing their lives every day. And of course, the attention of the number of people that have to go through um, health risks and also go through uh, loss of their property and their homes. In the COP25, nos falló totalmente. Eh, no vimos los avances, eh, no vimos el prog progreso que necesitamos para lograr parar eh, el cambio climático y no llegar a, a las consecuencias extremas que a, casi ya estamos viendo. How can we change the economic model? And how can we act quickly because global warming is not going to wait? The greater generation decides to take matters into their own hands with the politicians of their countries, just like real lobbyists. Other climate activists are doing the best informing people, but we need that global conversation, and it can only be made a reality if the national government comes on board. My fight in Argentina started to talk about the topic. Algo que parece tan básico, capaz en otros países, en Argentina no se hablaban. Si el presente es de lucha, el futuro es nuestro. Si queremos que se empiece a tratar como un problema realmente importante en Argentina, tenemos que hacer que se declare el país en estado de emergencia climática y ecológica. Es como que el Congreso es mi segunda casa, básicamente, eh, y empecé a ir muy seguido a hablar con diferentes políticos que nos tratamos, con mucha gente que realmente no sabía ni qué era el cambio climático. Lo que necesitamos hacer es trabajar juntos, pero muchas veces los gobiernos no quieren, no quieren escucharnos y por eso se, se, se ve como que nosotros está, nos estamos poniendo en contra de ellos, porque obviamente nos oponemos a, su, a sus políticas, pero si cambiaran sus políticas pudiéramos trabajar con ellos. Eh, si no tuvieran políticas que, que discriminarían, que violaran los derechos humanos, obviamente no nos opondríamos. 
Today, between these young girls who are calling to save the planet and these leaders who seem to despise them, communication seems to be more and more difficult. Sometimes we would enter a um, government meeting, for example, and we'd shake their hands and they would like tell us that, you know, it's why are you in the government meeting? You're so beautiful. It's better that you, um, you know, why don't you consider becoming a model? You know, or things like that, which is very, very belittling. Uh, but for Malati and her fighting sisters, there's no question of letting their guard down. The people don't want. We want to change right. because we know, you know, that hurts the ocean. But, yes. So, so we are flexible. We accept. So don't forget. Right. But just how much longer do we have to wait? Is it? It's definitely not a challenge of budget. It's definitely not a challenge of whether the people want it or not. So what is what? What is the bigger than us challenge and barrier that keeps companies from changing? I learned a lot about the different levels and layers that bureaucracy has. How complex the system is. At a meeting across from me is a politician. He says, "I agree with you, Malati, but it's just simply too difficult." And I'm like, explain it to me. Why is it so difficult? And they'll take me through all of the regulations that they created to make it super difficult. I think we need to have an entire change of the way we think in politics. And that can only come from fresh new minds. When we went for the European Parliament for the climate debate, almost no one actually did something or anything because they were saying oh and i'm sure you're tired of us saying we're going to do something but actually we don't actually they were being hypocrites when dialogue seems impossible some people don't hesitate to challenge the law in france 16 takes part in civil disobedience actions to make the public authorities react and push them to take their responsibilities Et parce qu'il s'agit de nos vies, nous sommes prêts à prendre des risques et entrer en résistance. Nous n'arrêterons pas de nous battre. On enlève ce portrait et on laisse un vide sur les murs de ces mairies. Et pour nous, c'est le vide de la politique climatique et sociale de Macron. Il y a vraiment une incohérence dans son discours et dans ses actes. Et c'est ça qu'on veut dénoncer. Le pétrole et le gaz. For these young women, the problem comes from the collusion between the political world and the economic world. That's why they've decided today to appeal to the courts. And they no longer hesitate to attack states directly for climate inaction. In short, for an attack on the fundamental rights of children, health, culture, life. In 2017, 16-year-old Jamie Margolin experiences dangerous levels of pollution in Seattle as a result of the huge fires raging in Canada. The air is getting harder and harder to breathe. With a group of young people, she decides to approach the state of Washington to ensure that their fundamental rights are respected. It was a first. We in the Washington State Constitution have a thing called the Public Trust Doctrine that says that the young people have the rights to like the natural resources of the land so that like you have to save something for the next generation. We're saying that they're denying our rights and what we're suing for is for the court to recognize our rights and then for um, a climate recovery plan. We're here as citizens of the planet, as victims... In 2019, with Redeemer and 14 other young people, Greta Thunberg files a complaint against five polluting countries, including India and France, in line with the United Nations Committee on the Rights of the Child. The message we want to send is to say that we have had enough. Every kind of thing is the biggest problem. The water crisis is the biggest problem. Air quality is not good. Water quality is not good. I don't think so, like, I'm going to ask somebody, is there anything which is good in India? Frustrated with her country's leaders, Redima refers specifically to the fog that hits the big cities of northern India every winter. The fog is caused by car exhaust, industrial fumes and fires caused by farmers in the surrounding countryside. A pollution level 20 times higher than the safety level recommended by the World Health Organization. In New Delhi, this is what the city looks like before and after toxic fog. And 
This is what Redeemer said to the UN Committee on the Rights of the Child. I'm here because I want all the global leaders to do something to stop climate change. Because if it's not going to be stopped, it's going to harm our future. My rights were violated. So it's like it was injustice with me. And I was very, really very angry with our government. I was frustrated with their work. So like my whole frustration, anger, my injustice, everything came like in a kind of small thing and it just popped up. Complaints, demonstrations, international conferences, political actions. The struggle of all these climate activists motivates them. For them, the stakes justify all the sacrifices. It's been really difficult um, trying to navigate both myself as a person and the climate movement because it does feel like you give a lot of yourself and a lot of your time and a lot of your energy and you give so much and you don't really get a lot in return. People don't really understand like how urgent it is for us. And when I say, like, it is my personal fight, I would, it means that I am really willing to do everything in my power to make a difference. I think my worst fear has to do with not being able to do enough in what we have to do to create a world that is a little more just. While activists have difficulty being taken seriously by politicians, they also face a lack of recognition from people around the world. Their shared sense of climatic urgency is often met with denial from their fellow citizens. Air travel is just one example of how difficult it is for the general public to associate themselves with a phenomenon whose effects they do not feel directly, and for which they do not feel responsible. a very indulgent lifestyle now and we're taking advantage of that and you know there we could definitely do something about it and we're not it's people who are like yeah this is a big issue but they don't really understand the full severity they don't understand the system change that needs to happen they don't get it i don't not too sure why people are being so negative about people who are trying to save the planet maybe because they have nothing else to do for the day instead of just being negative to the entire day instead of instead of supporting them et en plus on va être victime d'attaques personnelles euh, de la part de personnes qui aiment pas notre discours et pourtant notre discours il est nécessaire actuellement mais il y a des gens à qui ça plaît pas du tout et il suffit d'un passage à la télé pour que après notre twitter euh, soit envahi de d'insultes euh, paternalistes infant qui nous infantilise euh, uh, violent, de menaced. Harassment. Misogynistic insults. Those who do not accept the struggle of the youth for their future express themselves without grace. Greta Thunberg is the first victim of abusive language. Even personalities are getting involved, starting with the President of the United States, Donald Trump. Despite all the attacks against them, the greater generation refuses to give up, and today the commitment of these many climate activists is starting to pay off. In countries across the world, things are changing. Laws are passing, and gradually the idea of a state of climate emergency is gaining ground. I know. We're just asking you to stop lying to the people about climate change and about pollution and to offer them solutions instead of bullshit.
In the United States, Jamie Margolin has been invited to testify before the Congressional Committee on the International Climate Crisis. For the first time under the Trump era, the young American forces her country's political representatives to face their responsibilities. Ms. Jamie uh, Margolin is from Seattle, Washington. You're here spending a few moments with me, but that is nothing compared to the hours that members of Congress have spent with lobbyists from corporations that make billions of dollars off of the destruction of my generation's future. I want the entirety of Congress, in fact, the whole U.S. government, to remember the fear and despair that my generation lives with every day, and I want you to hold on to it. It was really incredible getting to testify before Congress because I finally got to tell the leaders who I'd just been yelling at like through the TV, actually in person, what I felt. All of this burden that the climate crisis has had on me and my generation. And I actually got to speak to the people in power, tell them what I really felt, tell them what they needed to hear. For Malati, even though the war against plastic in Bali is not over, a few months ago, she achieved a decisive victory, the banning of single-use plastic bags on the Indonesian island. Selaku konsumen uh, merasa sama sekali tidak ada keberatan karena uh, program pemerintah itu sangat amatlah baik. Finally, that after six years of hard work, whether that was, you know, we went through two government uh, governor rounds, a lot of government meetings, a lot of rallying with the people, marches on the streets, everything. You, you, in June 2019, we finally saw the island of Bali implement the ban on plastic bags. However, as all regulations, I always say it's only words on paper, if not fully implemented into changing everyday habits. We're just not seeing the full job done. But one of the greatest victories of these activists is without a doubt Nicole's victory in the Argentinian Congress, introducing the climate emergency into law. That was one of her main objectives. Tenemos que hacer que se declare el país en estado de emergencia climática y ecológica. Tuvimos, la escribimos nosotros, la presentamos, fuimos a, a Congreso, tanto a senadores como a diputados, hablamos en frente de, de, de todos los que estaban ahí y logramos que se apruebe. En julio, el mismo día, recibió media sanción un proyecto de ley de cambio climático, que tiene que es fuerza de ley, es mucho más importante todavía. Y ahora el 20 de noviembre, gracias a que hablamos en Cámara de Diputados, eh, y así fue como logramos que se apruebe esta ley. Los jóvenes por el clima que desde hace un año en todo el mundo y en la Argentina están poniendo en la agenda política y en la agenda ciudadana este tema y me parece importante saludarlos, es tal vez su primera vez dentro de este recinto porque son muy jóvenes y así como vimos crecer la marea feminista. Another great victory, an international one, is Marinelle's victory in front of the Philippine Commission on Human Rights, held in New York in 2018. As a result of her formal complaint, for the first time, multinationals were held legally responsible for climate change. Because we will never forget how it took everything from us. Thank you. And when I received the, um, the message, the email, like, we have won, like, I was literally shouting and crying. Like, I was so happy. It was, it was like more than, more than the feeling that I have felt when I, when I graduated and got my license and passed the licensure examination for social worker. It's really a big, big thing for me. You know, I felt like I got the justice, you know, not like the entire justice, but like it's the first step in getting the justice and that is justice still. What if Marinelle, Redeemer, Sixteen, Jamie and the others were the leaders of tomorrow? What if they succeeded in making the environment the central concern of all politicians? As all these committed young girls become more and more prominent in the public debate, what would they do if they were in power? If I was the president, the first thing I would do is to say the truth, to say the situation in which we are, in which we are, so that people are not in ignorance or in the denial. If I would be the Prime Minister and I want to use renewable sources, I want to conserve some fossil fuels for the coming generation also. Y disminuiría 
eh, todo lo que tenga que ver con el fracking y media minería, no la sacaría de un día para el otro porque creo que sí es necesaria una transición justa. I would send delegation to the COP. <laughs> like my people in the Philippines are suffering and you need to take action in the first world countries. But how can you do that if you don't even send delegation to this kind of world negotiation? Right? I would ban all single use plastics. Um, I would definitely protect all forests immediately and create a consequence uh, for any deforestation that takes place. I'd keep all oil in the ground and try and build upon all the resources and protect the resources of- If I were president or if I were Congress, like I would be treating it like we were at war because we are at war, but with the climate crisis, with these corporations. What I would do is I would make the environment and of course matters that affect the human race a priority at first before anything else. Because once we have solved environmental degradation and the climate crisis challenges, then we will have halfway solved the challenges that are being faced right now. Greta Thunberg is now the symbol of a generation of citizens, a generation that dreams of a better, fairer, more egalitarian world that respects nature. Et c'est fort de se dire qu'on a un combat plus grand que nous dans notre vie. Ça apporte quelque chose, euh, un, ça apporte quand même un sens de se dire qu'on n'est pas là sur Terre que pour nous, mais on est là aussi pour, euh, pour se battre pour les autres, pour les générations futures, pour les gens à travers le monde. Et il euh, ne faut pas prendre la grosse tête parce qu'on ben, est quand même une petite goutte dans, le, dans un océan, mais, euh, mais ça apporte euh, quelque chose qui nous dépasse. Quoi. Et c'est beau quand même. My message to, to young people who want to have an impact on the world is to be creative. There is so incredibly much you can do and uh, to not underestimate yourself. In the face of ecological disasters and the urgency of the climate situation, these young women are our hope for change. They embody the struggle of a new world against the old. To put it simply, they are the future.